It's one of the deadliest chemical agents ever created. Within seconds of exposure, symptoms of nausea and convulsions take over. Without emergency treatment, paralysis, respiratory failure, and death can occur within minutes. This deadly killer is the nerve agent VX. Weapon VX. Classification organophosphate. Lethal dose 30 micrograms. The organophosphate type of chemicals are considered nerve agents because they attack the nervous system. The nervous system controls all of the functions of the body and so by interrupting or stimulating that you get all these various effects. VX in its normal state is a tasteless, odorless liquid that can be absorbed through the skin in seconds. When heated, it turns into a lingering vapor that if inhaled is even more deadly. VX is a persistent agent, which means it's less volatile than the other nerve agents. This means that uh, when it's exposed to the air, uh, the material doesn't go up into the air and it lasts much longer. To give you an idea of how toxic the chemical is, if you pulled a penny out of your pocket, and if you looked at the penny and you looked at Lincoln's eye, it only takes a drop the size of Lincoln's eye to cause lethality. There are no confirmed cases of VX being used on people. But it's widely believed that during Saddam Hussein's chemical attack against the Kurds in 1988, VX was dispersed with deadly results. The attack on the Kurds killed over 5,000. VX is the most potent nerve agent today, but the path to its discovery dates back to before World War I. Chemists knew that many of the chemicals used in the dye industry and other uh, industries could be very deadly. During World War I, the Germans began to weaponize chemicals by putting in artillery shells and portable chemical cylinders and releasing them on the battlefield. And they used them very effectively. Although chemical agents were effective in causing casualties, they were not always lethal. But that would change in the 1930s, when German scientists created the first nerve agent named Tabun. Between 1942 and 1945, they produced 12,000 tons of Tabun, as well as several thousand variations, including sarin. The nerve agents were definitely unique compared to the earlier World War I chemical warfare agents. They had very little smell to them. They began affecting the person very quickly and were much more lethal. When Germany fell to the Allies in 1945, its chemical stockpile was seized, and the United States began producing its own variation of the German nerve agents, which became classified as G agents. The most widely produced was a far more lethal version of sarin nerve gas. But by the early 1950s, an even deadlier nerve agent was discovered. A British company was investigating some insecticides and came across a particularly potent one. They looked at it and then referred it to the United States in about 1953-54 time frame. And the United States looked at it and realized that it was a whole new series of very potent nerve agents that had been discovered. They looked at all of them and then decided that probably VX was the one that they would like to go with. From 1961 to 1968, the United States produced approximately 4,400 tons of VX, enough to kill every human being on the planet. The U.S. stockpile served as a deterrent against the Soviet Union, which had begun producing even larger supplies of chemical agents, including the nerve agents Soman, Sarin, and VX. In 1960 and 61, we standardized an uh, artillery projectile and we came up with a newly designed landmine and also loaded VX in a rocket warhead. Fortunately, neither country ever used the lethal nerve agent against the other. In 1969, 
Richard Nixon agreed to ban the U.S. manufacturing of chemical weapons. Production of VX ceased, and the stockpile was placed in storage. Today, only the United States and Russia claim to have stockpiles of VX. Yet some suspect that Iraq may have produced large quantities of the deadly nerve agent. At the onset of Operation Iraqi Freedom, U.S. forces prepared for the worst. We felt that it was very likely that uh, our adversaries would use chemical weapons against us, and we felt that they had VX in their arsenal. VX is often used as a terrain denial weapon, kind of the way you would use landmines. And one of the things we're very concerned about is not having our forces stumble into land that's been contaminated with VX. The main goal at Edgewood Chemical and Biological Center in Maryland is to provide protection and detection for the U.S. troops in Iraq. We have the best protected force in the world. And each warfighter has all the protective equipment that he or she needs, the protective clothing and, and the protective mask. The masks will totally protect you against uh, inhaling VX. And the chemical protective clothing is specially designed so that the VX can't penetrate it. In January of 2005, the United States ended its hunt for weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. No VX was found. But the threat of VX doesn't end in Iraq. Other countries are suspected to be attempting to produce the deadly agent. And there is enough VX in the US and Russian stockpiles to kill millions. So the threat of attack from one of the world's deadliest weapons remains. The most effective antidote to VX is a mixture of drugs that includes atropine, prolidoxine chloride, and diazepam. Auto-injector kits containing these drugs are given to U.S. soldiers in case...